Hello and welcome to today's edition of Your Questions Answered with Father Gruner. I'm John Veneri. In this program, we take the questions that you send to us and we answer them. Father Gruner answers them. We talk about them. So please continue to send us these questions at questions at thefathercenter.com. We have a question today about transcendental meditation. What can you tell me about transcendental med meditation? Well, is this something a Catholic can do? Well, there's one thing I say about it. It's not Catholic. So, no, no, uh, certainly not. So, but I, you know, and I'm sure I know a bit more about it. But John, I know that this is a subject you know much more about it than I do. Yes. Well, uh, being a child of the uh, you know of the of the post-conciliar age, uh, I dabbled in transcendental meditation when I was in high school. Uh, friends of mine uh, uh, took it. It was kind of the rage, especially if you were a fan of the Beatles. I mean, George Harrison went over to to meet the Maharishi and you gain higher wisdom and all that. This is some the, 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 Indian the, the, yoga. Of yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And George Harrison bought a sitar. And uh, I mean, that was nice to hear him play that, but the other things weren't so good. But uh, in any event, um, transcendental meditation has been sold as a scientific form of relaxation. Okay, that's how they sell it to you. That's not how it was originally presented. There's an interesting, um, it was back in the VCR days, um, a very good documentary, I think it was called The God Makers. And he talked about the fact that, uh, the narrator talked about the fact that transcendental meditation is actually a Hindu practice. Yes. It is a Hindu practice, and you're given a mantra in order to go into this altered state of consciousness that supposedly relaxes you, which it does, by the way. It delivers on that level. So a mantra, what is that? Is that mantra is a name that you say over and over again, like Om, Om, or um, or I Om, I Om, something like that. I understand that th these are the um, these are actually Hindu deities that are being given. Well, you see, when you when you get there, you see, you're already first of all that all the devils, uh, all the gods of the, of the pagans are devils. Is, yeah, that's right, the Psalms, yes. So, so you have, you have these, and Hinduism is a, is, is a pagan religion. And so what you're invoking is you're invoking by repeating this God's, quote unquote, God's name over again, is you're calling upon him, mm -hmm. uh, this, this, this devil, to, to do something to you. So I, I can speak as having some exercise experience that the devil does have power to uh, to affect a person's nerves, or, or uh, so, uh, and of course, he always exacts a price for what you. So you may feel relaxed, but you're going to pay a price for it as well. Well, uh, what uh, what the man in this film had said, and also a, a friend of mine who actually fell into Hinduism for a while and then came out of it, he said that the film is is, is pretty much uh, quite accurate. In the 1950s, I think it was the Maharishi or one of the one of these Hindu men. They came over and they tried to promote Hinduism, I mean, med transcendental meditation, for what it was, came over to the United States, and that is a Hindu practice. Um, the people didn't want it. So they went back and they repackaged it, and they brought it back as a scientific form of relaxation that has nothing to do with religion. Now, I, I, as I said, friends of mine took transcendental meditation. They loved it. They invited me to do it, and I did it. I took the courses, and... They really, when you when you do these uh, th these preparations of what it is, uh, they really keep hitting, keep stressing, keep. Stressing. This is not a religion. This is not a. Re it's like Shakespeare. You know, me, me, me thinks he protests too much. Yeah. He's, it's not a religion. It's not a religion. Okay, not a religion. That's what they tell you, and you go through these weeks of training. Well, you know, once a week or whatever, and how wonderful it's going to be. And there's a picture of the Maharishi there and all that business, and then. When you go to finally learn how to do it, you are asked to bring a flower. You are asked to bring a piece of fruit. You are asked to bring a white linen napkin of some sort. Scientific, okay, follow this. So then when you go to the, to the TM place and you knock at the door and it's, it's your time to learn, there's no one there but you and your instructor. And you, I, he opens the door, and he's in this white robe. And he asks me if I have the gifts, and I said yes. And then he tells you this has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with religion. I was pretty stupid to go along with it. But anyway, yeah. nothing to do with religion. And, uh, and then he said, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to set the right atmosphere. 
for you learning how to do this. So he takes the fruit and he takes the napkin and he takes the flower and then he says to me, would you like a flower? So I'm stupid, you know, I'm in high school, I didn't know anything. So I took the flower and then he starts chanting. Not a, not a religion, just a sign. And then he sits you down and teaches you your mantra, which you say over and over again. And when you do this, as I said, these, these, this, the dangerous thing is these practices do deliver an experience. I'm saying it's a good experience for the good, but they do deliver something that feels good. And um, so you go into this really this altered state of consciousness, and then when you come out of it, you feel relaxed, you feel refreshed, you feel as if you had just gotten a full night's sleep. And then they, they tell you to do it twice a day, and on an empty stomach because it does slow down your, down your digestion. But the point I want to make is they keep claiming it is not a religion, and yet it is prefaced by nothing less than a religious ritual. I mean, my daughter's in ballet. They, they studied ballet. They studied viola. None of their instructors came to the door in a white robe we're asking them to bring fruit and flowers and gifts and things like that. Or make a chant. Actually. And make a chant to set the atmosphere and they had the candle burning and all this business. But then what really woke me up to the dangers of transcendental meditation, uh, you know, once I, I, I figured out what I had done was, was not the right thing to do, but then I had a friend who had in his life been in the occult. This is Satan, Satanism. And he said, because he knew I was, a, he wasn't Catholic, but he knew I was a practicing Catholic. He said, you did that? You did, you did transcendental meditation? And I said, well, yeah. He said, I was in the occult. That was the first thing we learned. The very first thing we learned was transcendental meditation. So, um, so it's, I, I was actually surprised to get this question because I thought TM was something that was just passe, that people weren't doing it. I mean, George Harrison's dead, so what's the point, you know? But, um, but clearly it's still going on. Yeah. And I think some people are kind of using it, claiming that they use it for some sort of medical reason to relax the patient or something like well, that. But the, the real thing is that you're obviously invo they're invoking a devil. The, the devils, I mean, if you ever attend to uh, exorcism, you understand one thing, if not much more, the devil is very cruel. He does charge a price. And he will give you what you're looking for, but you pay a price. And I've seen... I've had a deal with people who've been paying the price for years. I mean, there's cases on record where people even playing with a, with a Ouija board. Oh yes, Chester uh, saw that. Have, have tried to, uh, they become possessed and uh, trying to kill some uh, their companions or something like that. It's really so. It's a dangerous thing to answer your question. Is, is it okay? No, it's no, it's, it's a mortal sin. Stay away from it. And, and, and it's stay bad for your soul it. and bad for your bad for your physical well-being. Bad bad for your cultural well-being. Well, but any which way. Stay away from it, and and uh, and realize that you're, it's it's a front for the devil to to suck you in to uh, make things much worse for you. All the while claiming to give you this beautiful experience. Yeah. So and anyway, the experience it may feel like that, but it really isn't in the in the final thing. It so uh, so that's it for this program, and we will see you on the next broadcast. Thank you.